This video is brought to you by Harting Technology Group. Harting is a 100% family-owned German company that started its mission back in 1945. During these productive 77 years, Harting evolved into the global leader in supplying connectivity solutions for the industrial technology's three main lifelines – data, signals and power. Its portfolio also includes customized solutions and products for the Railway systems, and that's the reason why they decided to support Railways Explained. Do you want to find out more about this great company? In case you do, maybe the best opportunity is to visit InnoTrans 2022, the world's best railway fair taking place in Berlin from 20th to 23rd September this year. Karting will be present there, and if you want to know them better, visit the whole 16 during the fair. Check out the link in the description for more details. Today on our channel we are discussing another European mega project called the New Rail Link through the Alps. It is happening in Switzerland and its name might be too general to arouse your interest. But if we tell you that it includes the construction of the Gotthard Base Tunnel, currently the longest railway tunnel, as well as two other tunnels, Luchberg and Chanery, we think there's a good chance to get your attention. The construction of these tunnels was a huge game changer for the European continent, bearing in mind that they facilitated transport over the Alps and enabled the railways to provide attractive services at the heart of the European international transport system. The story of the launch of this project and its background are also fascinating, so that's where we will start our video. During the second half of the 20th century, when the effects of globalization began to be felt and in the context of the growing mutual economic dependence of all world countries, there was a significant increase in the transit traffic and one of the busiest routes was through Switzerland. Why? Well, Switzerland with its geographical position lies midway along Europe's main north-south transport axis. Namely, the Gotthard Pass in the Alps is the shortest link between the navigable Rhine and the Po River, so it is not surprising that one of the most important European multimodal corridors is branded the Rhine-Alpine Corridor. This corridor encompasses the most heavily industrialized north-south route in Central Europe and connects Europe's prime economic regions, such as the North Seaports of Belgium and the Netherlands with the Mediterranean port of Genoa. A major role in this increased transit traffic through the Alps had the road transport. During the 80s and the 90s of the last century, Switzerland entered into negotiations with the European Economic Community, which is the predecessor of the EU, and demanded a limitation on the transalpine truck traffic. The EEC refused and Switzerland reached for a tailor-made instrument in the form of a heavy vehicle fee, a kilometer-based tax on freight vehicles above 3.5 tons and all trucks. In hand with that move came the proposal to build the new high-performance railway tunnels through the Alps and thus enable better railway service, with the aim of taking over a big part of road freight transport. The reason for this is that Switzerland earlier than other countries incorporated a transport policy into its constitution and made mobility as environmentally compatible as possible. Switzerland wanted this growing volume of traffic to be transported by rail. However, such traffic volumes were more than the 130-year-old Gotthard route could accommodate. The only solution was to upgrade the rail infrastructure and raise the capacity of rail lines to meet the rising demand for freight transportation and customers' increasing needs. Therefore, the proposal of a project called the New Railway Link through the Alps or NRLA came from the Swiss policymakers which will become the biggest construction project that Switzerland has ever undertaken in its history. It comprises the Luchberg Base Tunnel, the Gotthard Base Tunnel and the Chandri Base Tunnel. As with everything else in Switzerland, the implementation of this project was subject to a mandatory referendum held in September 1992. At the referendum, 63.6% .6 voted in favor of the project development, demonstrating their commitment to the protection of the Alpine regions and contributing to the sustainable management of the flow of goods in Europe. Two years later, voters also approved the Alpine Initiative, which prohibits road building in the Alps and encourages the transport of as many transalpine goods as possible by rail rather than a road. 
Also, the 1998 Traffic Transfer Act was adopted, which sets an ideal maximum number of trucks crossing the Alps by road. Meeting this goal required fully functional NRLA rail links and quality and reliable rail infrastructure that links planned tunnels within NRLA. The original estimate in 1998 prices for the construction of these tunnels and several auxiliary structures was 12.2 billion Swiss francs, which is a huge amount of money, you will agree. Therefore, the Federal Council proposed the creation of a fund for financing major public transport projects that at the time included NRLA, as well as the Rail 2000 modernization program, which we mentioned on the channel several times. Part of this fund would also be the installation of connections from East and West Switzerland to the European high-speed network, as well as noise reduction measures along the railway lines. The fund would be fed with the tax on oil products, two-thirds of the income from the performance-related heavy vehicle fee, revenue from the value-added tax, which was increased by 0.5% for this purpose, as well as federal loans on the capital market. Approximately 30 billion Swiss francs was planned to be invested in the modernization package over a period of 20 years, of which about half is for the needs of NRLA. This proposal was also part of the mandatory referendum and the voters supported it with a majority of 63.5%. The EU accepted the Swiss proposal regarding heavy vehicle tax and new tunnels construction, but requested that the truck's extant 28-ton weight limit be raised to 48 tons. The parties eventually compromised on a 40-ton weight limit. Let's see what exactly was covered by the project, what are some interesting benefits it brought, and how much the project ended up costing. The NRLA project included the construction of three tunnels located on two axes. The Gotthard axis with the Gotthard base tunnel and the Chandri base tunnel and the Luchberg axis with the tunnel of the same name. After Swiss voters accepted the project in a 1992 referendum, the first preparatory and exploratory work on the Gotthard Base Tunnel began in 1996. It was a very complex task because it was necessary to examine the geology of such a vast space, determine the type of rock and predict its behavior to determine the optimal route. In such complex projects, the best route between two points is not always a straight line. After developing a preliminary design, the Swiss Federal Council approved the Gotthard Base Tunnel route between Erstfeld and Bodio. It includes a tunnel system with two single-track tunnels consisting of tunnel tubes, shafts, passages, stations, various mechanical and electromechanical devices, signaling, ETCS system, etc. The total system length, which needed to be excavated and equipped, is an incredible 151.8 km. The two rail tunnels are about 40 meters apart and are joined approximately every 325 meters by connecting galleries. The tunnel included the construction of two multifunction stations beneath Fido and Cedron, dividing both tubes into three roughly equally long sections. One of the tasks of these multifunction stations is to enable the trains to cross over from one tube into the other and stop in case of the emergency. These stations also house ventilation equipment and other technical infrastructure and serve as evacuation routes. The official start of construction took place in November 1999, with a total projected cost of 6.3 billion Swiss francs. Alp Transit Gotthard AG was a company responsible for construction and it was a wholly owned subsidiary of the Swiss Federal Railways. To cut construction time in half, four access tunnels were built so that construction could start at four different sites simultaneously. Also, a fifth was added later. The most significant part of the construction was carried out using four tunnel boring machines about 45 kilometers for each tube. About 28.2 million tons of rock were excavated equivalent to five Giza pyramids. The final breakthrough in the East Tube occurred in October 2010, while in the West one in March 2011. We got to point out that the surveyors achieved a masterly performance as the deviation of the two tunnels was only 8 cm laterally and 1 cm in height. 
In October 2014, the railway track installation was completed. A gold slipper on the very last part of the track was installed during the event to mark the milestone of the progress. In 2016, several events, including festivities and special exhibitions, were held around the Gotthard, culminating in the inauguration in early June. This ceremony, known as Gotardo 2016, organized by Volker Hesse, included an absolutely spectacular and some would say weird, the scenography of 600 dancers, acrobats, singers and musicians, celebrating alpine culture and myths around the Gotthard. After construction, the world got the longest and deepest railway tunnel, with a length of 57 kilometers and a maximum depth of 2.5 kilometers. Just to point out that on Railways Explained we have already covered the construction of the Brenner based tunnel between Austria and Italy, so if you haven't, consider watching it, because after completion this tunnel will become the longest tunnel in the world. The final price of the works on the Gotthard based tunnel was 12.2 billion Swiss francs, which is almost double the original estimated value. One note, the Swiss franc is currently at almost the same level as the euro and the dollar, so for the video there is no practical need to convert these currencies. Just so you know, about 44 million francs goes annually to the maintenance of the tunnel, while about 24 million is spent on the operation. The next tunnel that we want to cover is the Chenery Base Tunnel. An exploration tunnel was excavated already between 1999 and 2003, to gain geological data on the rock formations. Based on those data, it was decided to excavate most of the tunnel with traditional blasting methods and only drill a small part using a TBM. The Chenry Base Tunnel is developed as a tunnel system that includes parallel tubes, each containing a single track set 40 meters apart and connected by cross passages at evenly spaced intervals of also 325 meters. Stretching between the towns of Camorino and Vezia, it has a total length of 39.6 kilometers. An operation center controlling ventilation and logistical activities has also been constructed. As with the Gotthard Base Tunnel, the main contractor for the tunnel was Alp Transit Gotthard AG. In June 2006, construction work on the tunnel officially began. A combination of conventional drilling and blasting techniques was used to bore approximately 37.5 kilometers, while the remaining was bored using a TBM. In January 2016, a breakthrough was achieved in the west and east tubes. This took place with great accuracy. The vertical deviation was only 2 centimeters and horizontal only 1. Works on the installation of the track, electrical supply cables, telecommunications and radio systems, but also automation systems, overhead lines and various safety and control systems were completed in 2018. After a period of commissioning and testing, the tunnel was officially open in September 2020. The final value of the project was around 3.6 billion Swiss francs. In both tunnels on the Gotthard route, as a general rule, Passenger trains travel at a speed of 200 km per hour, while freight trains travel at a minimum speed of 100 km per hour. With the completion of these tunnels, the travel time of passenger trains between important destinations has been reduced by 50 to 60 minutes, as you can see on the screen. As for freight trains, in addition to the reduced travel time, it is important to mention that these tunnels, due to the smaller slope, enable the traffic of longer and heavier trains. In addition, the infrastructure capacity was increased from 180 to 260 trains per day. Just so you don't think we forgot, we must point out that on this route there is another tunnel called the Zimmerberg Base Tunnel. Its length is 20 kilometers and its construction is divided in two phases. The first phase was already implemented as part of the Rail 2000 program between 1997 and 2002. It related to 9.4 kilometers of the tunnel between Zurich and Talwil, and it was not a part of the NRLA program. The second phase is included in the Strategic Expansion Program 2035 from 2019. Let's now move on to the Luchberg axis. The Luchberg base tunnel is a base tunnel on the Luchberg line owned by BLS AG. The tunnel is located some 400 meters below the existing Luchberg tunnel. 
BLS Alp Transit AG was founded in 1993 as a wholly owned subsidiary of BLS AG and it was responsible for the construction of this tunnel. The project was designed as a tunnel 34.6 km long with two single track tubes that are 40 meters apart and connected by cross tunnels every 333 meters. In 1999, full scale construction work began. As a consequence of spiraling costs attributed to the overall NRLA project, it was decided to redirect funds from the Lujberg Tunnel to the Gothard Base Tunnel, and therefore only one of the tunnel's two bores has been bored and is fully equipped for train use. As for the second Pharaoh, 14 km have been excavated and equipped for passenger traffic, the next 14 are excavated but not equipped, and about 6 km have not been even excavated. High-speed switches allow the completed third track to be used as a passing track, but the 21 km of the single track without passing loops complicates operations and greatly reduces the line capacity. The tunnel was largely excavated using a combination of traditional techniques including drilling and blasting. The remaining 20% was excavated using TBMs. These parts of the project which were completed were declared operational in December 2007. The total value of works was 5.3 billion Swiss francs, while the cost of completing works in the second tube has been estimated at 1 billion Swiss francs. The parliament is scheduled to decide in 2023 whether it wishes to adhere to the partial upgrade or whether the tunnel should be fully upgraded. To enable full utilization of the capacity of the tunnels that we mentioned so far, Switzerland launched several initiatives, among which was the establishment of a so-called 4-meter corridor. You're probably wondering what that is. Namely, European transport of goods involves increasing number of articulated lorries with semi-trailers of 4-meter corner height. Before 2020, semi-trailers with a 4-meter corner height could only be transported via the Lujberg route, while this was not possible on the approach routes to the Gotthard Tunnel. Therefore, the Swiss state has awarded contracts for the modification of several tunnels, platform roofs and catenaries, and as a result from 2020, it is possible for vehicles with a 4-meter corner height to travel along the entire length of the Swiss north-south route. Switzerland is also financing the necessary modifications to the clearance on the Italian rail lines, so that trains with 4-meter loads can run and access the main intermodal terminals. Thanks to these investments, the model shift effect of the NRLA will be significantly increased. The overall cost of creating a continuous 4-meter corridor is almost 1 billion Swiss francs, while the total value of the NRLA project came out to a whopping 22.8 billion. This was a story of the NRLA project on Railways Explained. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Before the end, we would like to thank all our patrons for their generous support. If you want to help us improve our production, you can do it directly on Patreon or also you can buy some cool rally stuff in our online store. Links in the description. Also, if you're coming to this year's InnoTrans, don't forget to visit our friends from Harting Technology Group in Hall 16. At the end, like this video, share it with your real loving friends and of course subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, goodbye.